Alright guys, so here's another comic review, and this one is another book, and this is a part of a series I've been reviewing and collecting for a while. Star Wars Darth Vader. This is the third of the Darth Vader ongoings. Um, this is from the Greg Pak era, which is basically set in between Empire and Return of the Jedi. Um, yeah. So, if you guys remember, I did a... Um... I, I did a review of Star Wars Crimson Rain, which was the last big Star Wars event, which I found... I found your lack of event. I find your lack of event disturbing. That's what I had to say about it. It was not good. I did not like the main event. It looked like it was... It was it's the most agonizing and aggravating kind of event, where all the, all the cool shit you want to see is in the tie-ins. And Marvel stays away from that these days... For the most part, there are a few where I can look at. Yeah, that one's where I feel like the tie-in was very more important than the main story. Here, we focus on um, one such tie-in, which is the Darth Vader tie-in. So, in this, Vader has basically been going around hunting down um, Crimson Dawn members who have infiltrated the Empire. And he's going on a massive hunt with them. But he's not alone. He has actually gotten together with Ochi of Bestoon, who you guys would probably remember. He's working with Ochi, who is better known as the guy who will, who will kill um, Ray's parents in the future. Um, Ochi, uh, him and Ochi have gotten together a team of characters that are all pretty fun. Like we have re um, re uh, rebels. We have um, we have fucking. Um, uh, assassins who work with him. They're all great characters, so this this band of characters have all come together to fight with their own reasons, either getting paid or fighting the Crimson Dawn to battle um, uh, battle the Crimson Dawn under Vader's command. However, what he doesn't know is two things. Ochi is working for the, uh, for the Crimson Dawn, and the Crimson Dawn has another character who was introduced in the first volume of this series, which is Sabe. Uh, Sabe? Sabe? Uh, Sabe. Yeah. I cannot pronounce her name. Sabi? Yo, oh, yeah, Sabi. Sabi, if you guys remember, was um, Kira Knightley's character in The Phantom Menace, and she was created a, a group of the handmaid of the of Padme's um, uh, of Padme's handmaidens, and made a group called the Amidalas. And as such, um, Sabi has. Um, been hunting for Vader, but not for the reasons you think. She's not out to kill Vader because now she's found out something about him. She's found she went to Polis Massa, where she got the last recording of Padme's uh, record. You know, Padme's death, the last moments of Padme's death, and has literally put two and two together. So, um, yeah. So it's more or less the two stories collide, which thank God because. Literally, we get back on track after, what, two volumes of the, uh, yeah, literally a volume, or rather two volumes of not seeing Sabe, and now we get her back, and apparently in the in the current story arc that will be collected in January, um, that be they become closer in the series, and we get more of why, Va of more of a reason of why Vader um, became the way he did in Return of the Jedi. I've been really liking the Greg Pak series. While I don't think it's the be I don't think it's the best of the Vader comics. I that title goes to Karen Gillan's Vader run. Like without question, Karen Gillan's Vader run is without a doubt the best. Um, not just best Star Wars one of the best Vader comic, but one of the best Marvel comics I've ever read. You know, in in a long time, it's one of the best Vader com Marvel books. Not just for Star Wars, but like for Marvel books. Period. It's so damn good. It was the Karen Gillan run is so damn good. Um, the uh, the second series that's that's centered in in episode from in between episode three and New Hope that was that was decent. Um, this one is pretty good. This is pretty good. I I um I do like how they're kind of marriaging. They're doing this marriage of the sequel trilogy and the prequel trilogy. I do think Into the Fire is the best volume, but I'm getting off topic. 
So in this volume, yeah, Vader is on a war path, but we do see that Vader, like, it's kind of a running thing with all these comics. It's literally a running thing with all these comics where everyone thinks Vader's stupid, everyone thinks Vader's an idiot, when really Vader's the one pulling, like, um, doing, like, these master, like, 40 chess moves on everyone else except the Emperor, who kind of anticipates everything. Then you have all the other characters, like G90, who is... Uh, G90 is like this big ball droid um, who has a sense of humor. You have uh, Tanka, who is a Tardoshian, um, Sira, who is a Weeque, and this girl named Akanla. And they're all uh, like these characters are all a lot of fun because they're all uh, like they're all anti Crimson Dawn who are rebel fighters. But then you have another trio which G90 is a part of who are other who are also assassins. And there's I like the juxtaposition between the two. I really do enjoy that. We also get Valance again, who... I don't like Valance. I don't care at all for Valance in any way, shape, or form. If you don't know who Valance is, Valance is basically an Imperial soldier who turned on, Dar on Vader and the Empire and became a bounty hunter after he was demoralized by it. Now they brought him back. He got it. Apparently, he's fit, his machine, his cybernetic face is, is uh, repaired thanks to the Crimson Dawn, and now he's working for the Empire again. And yeah, I just don't care about Valance. He's just he's not Afra. That's the thing is that like Afra out of all the new Star Wars characters we've gotten, Afra is probably the best. Um, all in all, this is a very action-packed series. Um. I do, and also, it does the thing that we all kind of wanted it to, which was fucking do shit in your event. And thankfully, that's what happens, is that it actually fucking does shit in, in this tie-in. Um, uh, although, yeah, the fourth issue where Vader fights the Knights of Ren was cool, but that was hardly brought up. Um, not in here, which is fine, but yeah. that's uh, the, the last two issues of the event were really it. That Crimson Rain was just a slog to get through but thankfully the tie-in did a lot better and really i'm just reading the vader comics along with the event book so i'll know what goes on in the vader books because they'll be tied in um but yeah all in all if you've been enjoying uh darth vader or any of the star wars comics yeah check this out but anyway you guys tell me in the comments below what did you guys think of darth vader crimson range you guys like it hate it comment below let me know other than that i'm mr multiverse i'll see you next time in the multiverse